Hello, welcome to another video by Moxon Marine. Um, in this video, I am building a 4.3 liter V6, and this is General Motors 4.3 liter V6, just like just like any other videos I've done. Um, the difference is this is going in a Volvo Penta system. It's a Volvo Penta based boat, and uh, this is a 4.3 GM engine, and it's going in the Volvo Penta. So the bottom line is that Merc Cruiser and Volvo Penta, from the engine standpoint, are exactly the same. I'm not doing this any different than I would if I was building a Merc Cruiser. Uh, the only differences are when you get into the uh, ignition and the, uh, I think the shift kill and uh, maybe the carburetion, but um, other than that, the, the engine's internal, the rotating assembly is the same. Um, before I, and I've got five pistons in it, I'm about to put the last piston in it. Um, before, I, but before I did that, I thought I'd want to make a quick video and explain something. Um, I see probably more 4.3 liter V6s than any other engine. Um, more than the four, more than the four cylinder three liters, and the, and for sure the 5.7 and 5.0 V8s. Um, and I believe there's a reason for that. Well, it may be because they're more, maybe more popular because of the size of the boats that you find these in. But um, I see a lot of them uh, with damage, um, spun rod bearings mainly, and uh, that sort of thing. So I want to explain what I think is the cause of the problem. And uh, I'll, I'll also discuss when I buy a core engine, a 4.3 liter truck, a car engine, mostly trucks, um, I find a common problem with that too. So I've already discussed this on a, in a video about the, the uh, uh, three liter four, four cylinder Merc Cruiser. But in case you're not, in case you don't have a Merc Cruiser uh, three liter and you have the 4.3 V6, you may have missed that video. So let me uh, tell you, explain it here. So I'm about to put this last piston in and you can see that's the bearing on oh, this is piston number six and that's the bearing the bearings are the same for all pistons or all the holes but um that's the bearing so that's a that's a that bearing is unique to the 4.3 liter uh, v6 general motor v6 so this particular bearing came out of a v8 this is what goes in a v8 you know, 5.0 or 5.7 and some what's called wide bearing three liters 3.0 liters so you can see this bearing just to the naked eye is a little bit wider let me show you the side by side if you can see. See if you can see the difference. Let's see if you can catch, catch it. But um, I'll put the dimensions of these bearings in the description. I don't have my caliper handy, but you can see with the naked eye the, the um, 4.3 bearing is a little bit narrower than the other bearing. So the reason that's important is because the wider the bearing, the better it can handle load. It has more surface area to distribute the, uh, the impact from the uh, you know, force that's pushing down on the crankshaft. So the wider the bearing, the better, uh, as far as uh, being able to handle load. Um, and that's important because um, the number one problem, like I said, the number one problem I see is these bearings spun, these bearings are hammered um, and spun, and they, when they get hammered and get loose, they, they spin. They will spin inside this, this rod bore here. And when that happens, they usually just start falling apart and fall to pieces. And then you have uh, steel on steel, you'll have the rod You'll have this steel here, steel right here, riding on the crankshaft. Crankshaft's down there. And you'll have steel on steel with no oil, and it just heats up and basically it'll either seize up and weld itself together, or it'll break from the heat and sl it slings pieces out the side of the block. Usually it comes out the side here, no, that, not here. Actually, it comes out the oil pan, or some engines come out the side of the block. Um, so that, and that's not a good thing. That means your engine will be completely de destroyed, catastrophic damage. Um, so that's what I see. And again, the reason the bearings get hammered is because of low octane gas. So if you're using 87 in a Merc Cruiser or a Volvo Penta engine, or any boat engine basically, um, you're, you're uh, on borrowed time. You're gonna blow your engine up. You're gonna destroy it. Um, the, if you look at the factory service manual, the Merc Cruiser service manual, it says use 89 octane or higher. And they, they're not kidding around about that. They mean that. And I, I'm proof, my shop and my business is proof that that's true. You need to run 89 octane or higher gas to pr protect your engine, to keep your bearings from, these bearings is caused by detonation. Detonation is an is a, uh, uncontrolled uh, explosion in the cylinder. Um, normal normal uh, combustion, the flame starts at the spark plug and works its way across in a smooth manner, gradually pushing down the piston, and that's, that's how you want it. The lower octane has a tendency to burn all at once, kind of like a, a, a simultaneous explosion. Um, in other words, it can start, the flame can start at the opposite side of the cylinder and it'll, it'll kind of rush across, you know, basically combustion happens too fast. And it's like taking a hammer, a hammer and slamming the top of this piston. And that impact force, that hard impact force 
puts a load or slams these bearings and over time it'll flatten them. It's, it's a gradual wearing down of the bearing until the bearing can't handle the load and then it just starts disintegrating. So um, it's important that you run 89 or higher octane gas. So um, that's one, uh, one tip I wanted to give you. So another thing, when I buy, uh, I don't have this problem with the Merck Marine engines, but when I buy a 4.3 liter V6 core, and I've discussed this in other videos also, um, I'll find a lot of times the, the people I buy the engine from, I've gotten them as, as cheap as free. I've gone, you know, a couple of hundred miles, 150 miles to get a free engine, a free core one time, or I pay as low as 50, 50, $100 for them. Uh, paid as high as two hundred dollars for them. Um, one time, paid drove one hundred and twenty miles to buy, buy a core for one hundred fifty dollars, and the entire engine was ruined. It was destroyed. And I've got a video of that engine on my, on my channel. But um, it's a crapshoot when I buy a core, whether I know it's any good. Uh, one thing I do to make try to make sure it's okay is I take my uh, I take a torque wrench, and I try to rotate the engine all the way around a full turn to see if it'll rotate. If it won't rotate all the way, it's something major wrong inside, and I won't buy it. But that's one way I can tell this maybe halfway decent inside um, but back to what I was saying um, so a lot of people that have these engines when they have a core it's because they have water in the oil and they assume it's because they blew a head gasket uh, the, the head sits right here in the gasket that goes around the surface and when that gasket lets go it gets the water in the cooling system and these jackets here this is a cooling jacket here here that if you blow the head gasket this water in here will get over in here or it'll get down in uh, some of these other passages and get into your block and mix you with oil and oil and water don't mix, and sooner or later you just got a mess. And uh, oil, another thing, oil and water mix will also destroy your bearings also. So the customers usually think that, or the people that sell me their cores usually think that they got a blown head gasket and it's not worth repairing, so they just usually junk the motor, take it out, and sell it for cheap, sell it for a core. So what they don't know is um, what's happening, what i found a lot of times, is that in the late 90s and early and probably throughout the decade of 2000 General Motors used a plastic gasket it was a plastic intake gasket with rubber seals in it and it would, the gasket sealed against the cylinder head and the intake manifold was right here so um matter of fact here's a v8 and there's a plastic gasket in here between this this is your intake manifold and your cylinder heads right here that gasket that rides right in there is plastic on this engine it's plastic with a rubber seal and when you run Dex Cool, which is the antifreeze that GM was using back in those days, I may still be using, I don't even know. Um, the antifreeze they were using was incompatible. It was attacking that plastic gasket. It would, the gasket, the plastic was just a carrier and then the rubber seal was there. But the, if the carrier breaks down, the seal can't be held in place and it, the whole thing just lets loose. So you had a lot of uh, engines bleeding off coolant. It would be up here, let's see, it would be up here in the front. The, there was a port here from the intake and that port would leak. It would leak coolant down into your engine and mix oil and destroy your, and basically mix up. And uh, so the problem was the decks cool and the coolant. And it was basically a, the problem was right here at this junction right here where the intake met the, the cylinder head. It wasn't a blown head gasket, it was that joint right there. And uh, my son happened to have a uh, 2002 Sierra, the GMC Sierra with the 4.3. And about 120,000 miles, his truck would start misfiring, um, go, co not go, coasting, well, coasting downhill or just going on a flat surface on the on the highway. And uh, But if you put it under load, heavier load, it wouldn't misfire. It would run fine. And what I figured out was that um, when you're under light load or coasting, you have high vacuum. And that high vacuum is sucking coolant into the engine and, and causing the misfire. When you're under heavier load, there's less vacuum, so it wasn't sucking the coolant as bad, and it would run fine. But that was a telltale sign that that, good, that gasket was about to let go and it was time to fix it before it got worse. So I went ahead and did that. I tore the t entire top of the engine apart, took the intake gasket off of it, replaced it, and it's been running fine ever since. By the way, Felpro has a, uh, a, a, a replacement gasket. It's about $60 for the set, I think, but it's a metal carrier with the rubber gasket and that's the fix. That's what you want to use. Um, I'll, put the, I'll put the description of that part in this video. but. Um, if you ever have a car or truck and you have to fix that intake gasket, you want to use the metal carrier, not the plastic carrier. And that, that seems to be a permanent solution. But again, um, so you don't, the Dex cool would ruin the cores and I would get them cheap because I didn't really understand what, what was wrong with them. Um, and if you got them, if I caught them early enough, there wasn't a whole lot of damage to them. I was going to rebuild them anyway. So that's uh, how I got a lot of my cores, the 4.3s. Um, I didn't see that many 5.0s or 5.7s that way. Um, 
I just don't do as many as I do the 4.3s, but um, that's something uh, you don't have to worry about that in a marine application because the marine, you're not running antifreeze, you're running straight water, typically on an open cooling system like a marine engine. You just run, you're running straight river water or whatever water, uh, ocean water, river water, whatever, pond water. Um, that water is not does not damage the plastic gasket, so they work fine on the marine application. So I think that's one I want to tell you is um, the, the most important thing I want to get out of this video is please run 89 or higher octane gas. If I can, if, if I rebuild your engine and, I, and it comes back to me under warranty and I can tell that it was damaged due to detonation, I, I'm not going to warrant it. I can't. Um, because it was, it's obvious that 89 gas was not used. I can tell the I can tell detonation damage when I see it. And uh, because it's basically a, there will be a mystery. You don't even know what's happening to it. It's it's a, it's not really really evidence to why the bearings are hammered, but it's due to the due to the low octane gas. So um, hope the um, hope the 4.3 liter engine owners learn something out of this video. Uh, this applies obviously to the 5.0s and the 5.7s. So you want to run, uh, you, you need to read your manual, your Mercury's manual, and use the gas at least 89 or higher that they recommend. Uh, it's very important. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, and uh, good night.